Hello, welcome to my channel, welcome to my garage. This is Rick's Garage. And um, typically I don't like to watch someone unbox something on YouTube. To me, it's just a waste of time. I'm not interested in, in how it's packaged. I'm not interested in how it's unboxed and everything. I want to get right to the product. But with Andy's Hobby Headquarters, I thought that I would share something with you. I ordered quite a bit uh, from his website and I'm always amazed uh, at the way in which uh, the products are packed and how they're shipped. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, here's the box that I just got today. Uh, it's got his packing label on there and his logo. Nothing real special about that. A lot of companies do that. And then of course you've got your brown packing material in there. But here's what separates Andy from everybody else. First he gives you a really nice quality postcard. And he just says thanking you for the uh, the order. But what's really special, and I've already unboxed this, which is why the, the label is torn. But what's really special about this is that he packs all of his products in tissue paper. Now, name a company that does that. Uh, this is uh, this is just another piece of, of attention to detail and quality and care that he gives to his customers in the way in which he ships his products. This is just, to me, I'm just blown away about this. It's almost as if he's giving you a gift or sending you a gift in the mail, uh, the way this is all packed up. So let me get this out of the box and uh, show you what I ordered. Okay, like I said, I've already um, opened this up once before, which is why this uh, label has been torn. But uh, this is what I actually purchased. It is a, uh, get the glare off of here. It's a uh, Panzer III. And it's in 135th scale. It is by Tycom. And this is going to be the next build on the channel that I'm going to do. And I'm going to build it and then also do a separate video on how I'm going to paint it. And hopefully I might be able to even uh, show you how I'm painting it rather than tell you about how I painted it. Uh, we'll see how that goes. This is a pretty small kit. So I might be able to do that for you. Uh, this is going to be uh, a gift for someone that's in the family. And I'm also going to do a, a diorama for this as well but um, uh, what the main thing I wanted to show was exactly how this is uh, packaged how it comes from Andy's headquarters and I think that that really sets this company off uh, from all other companies that are out there so uh, you get something from Andy's, ho uh, Andy, Andy's hobby headquarters you're really getting a uh, not only a quality product but you're getting a lot of care in how it's being shipped to you and how it's being presented to you um, but anyway, that's it. So um, as Andy likes to say, let's get started. Okay, on this model, we start with assembly of the hull. But what I wanted to first bring out to your attention is the size of the manual. And it is quite small. Uh, for me, I have to use a little bit more powerful reading glasses, or even in some cases, a magnifying glass to try to identify these parts and how they go in because the diagrams are very small as you can see now the box that this comes in is about eight and a half by eleven so this could have been at least a seven and a half by ten inch manual rather than a little tiny booklet like this if it was uh eight and a half by eleven or seven by ten then the diagrams would be at least twice the size that they are now making it a lot easier for you to read that's just my opinion. I just thought I would mention it. Okay, we start off with assembly of the hull and oh, around this way. Here we go. And this piece right here is very simple. You just glue that in right there. But doing these, these parts right here and putting them into these holes up here is a little tricky. Now, these holes right here, these uh, four of them right here, are pretty simple to do. They just snap in like so and without any problem. Just goes in just like that without any problem. On this part here, you'll notice that there is an indent, a little tiny lug right there. I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not. And that little lug is going to match the hole that is right there. Um, the hull. So you take your part here 
and you match that lug right up there onto that hole and that locks it into place just like that. Okay. Then you take your next part right here and there is a locating lug here which is going to match the configuration on the back of this part. And you just go ahead and snap that into place and that put, puts it into place just like, the, just like that. Okay, and then this part right here, a little tiny part, that part right there is going to go into that slot right there. Okay, and then all the, the rest of the uh, the parts right here, I don't know what these are, control arms of some sort, they also have a same type of locating hole and a locating lug on the back of this part right here, and that just snaps into place like that, and you do that to all these holes right here where, the, where this part is going to go into and then by the time you get over here you're essentially going to repeat a little bit of what you did over here but with an additional part. So let me go ahead and get all these parts in. I just wanted to show you how this goes into, into, into place. Now you don't have to glue if you don't want to. You don't have to glue this part in. You can make this whole entire assembly secured by, uh, by just gluing this piece into here and maybe a little bit of glue up, up in here and then you get yourself a solid piece. That piece is not going to go anywhere. But I just wanted to show you how that went in. I hope that's clear and helps you out. So let me go ahead and get all these other pieces in, get to the end right here, and show you how this is going to be assembled. Okay, I've got all these uh, now assembled and glued into place. And gluing in the last arm here is exactly the same as you do over here. The only additional part that you have is this one here that is going to go into this hole over here. And what I wanted to bring to your attention is this little, little, tiny, tiny part right here. I don't know if the, get this all the way, maybe that may, may help. This part right here, this little arm that comes out, that is an extremely tiny, tiny part. And uh, I don't even know why they did, did it that way. They could have constructed this entire piece as one rather than two with that little tiny detail. But um, once that is thoroughly dried, I recommend that you wait for the glue to thoroughly dry on that. And then you'll notice that on the back of this part, right, let me see now, where is it? Ah, here it is. Right there is a lug. And then, of course, you have this round hole lug right here. Now that matches to the round lug here and the little tiny hole there. So that's a locating lug and you match that up like this and then you put that into the hole, the little tiny hole, and then you then push it into there. Now that's going to take a lot of pressure to put that in. So it's almost like a pressure fit. But that's exactly how that goes in. Make sure that you push it in as far as it will go. And then you can, have a, you can make your own decision whether or not you want to glue that in for extra security. Um, but that's how that goes in. The little fiddly part here that I mentioned earlier, this little, little tiny thing right here, it's, it really, really is a pain to get in. It's almost as if you've got to balance it onto the uh, slot that it goes into. And if you try to sand it down where it was cut off the sprue, you have a real good chance of breaking it. And uh, also you have a good chance of losing it too. If you do either, I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, you're really not going to see it once the tank is completely built anyway, I don't think. No one's going to miss it. And I don't know what it's for other than maybe some sort of a fender or a guard of some sort. But uh, anyway, I thought I would bring that out to your attention. But uh, otherwise, uh, everything else uh, just goes in uh, pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and complete this side, and then I'll do the other side. And then after that, we start working on the wheels. And I do know that after you've cleaned up all the wheels and tried to put the wheels together, they can go a little crooked. So you want to make sure that when you're uh, cementing these or gluing these in together that they are parallel and straight. So it's very easy for them to go in a little crooked. So uh, be aware of that. 
Uh, and then after that, uh, we uh, move on to the other steps of the build. So I'm going to continue on building, and if there's anything that I think uh, needs attention, I'll let you know. Okay, here's the hull completed after step number two. There's that side there, and the side here. Uh, what you want to make sure of is that you have all these arms going in the right angle. And again, they have a located lug to help you do that. Just make sure that that lug is seated correctly into the hole, and then you'll get all those done in the right angle. The angles for these two arms here are going to be determined by these pieces right here as they attach to the arm, and then they are secured here at the top. But that's the piece here. It's all done for after step number two. And then when you're done with that, you start working on the wheels, which you can see that I've already done. I've already uh, glued these wheels together, and I just want to make sure that they're parallel to each other. And then once this is all completely dry, I'll start working on the sanding and cleaning up. Now, the larger wheels, which you have to make 12 of, don't be deceived by these large lugs that are, are, are protruding out, these large pieces right here that are coming out. They're not going to go through the holes of the other side of the wheel, which is what I originally thought. There is a locating lug here. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. And a matching lug here on the other side. And what you're going to do is you're going to line those two up and you're going to create the wheel. And you'll notice that they do that those lugs that I mentioned do not come through those holes, okay, on either side. So that's how you put the wheels on. And then once that's uh, the glue is all dried, I will then start cleaning up the wheels. And I'm going to say that it's going to take me about an hour to do all the wheels, the cleaning it all, all up, and then getting them on, on the tank. But that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be working on that. I'll put it on the tank, come back, show you what that looks like, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, we're at part of the build here on step number four, where we have to assemble some tracks that are going to go on the back of the tank. Now, you don't have to assemble all the tracks that are going to go on the tank when they go on the wheels, because those are already preformed. Now, this is uh, the track that's going to go on the top. They're already done for us. And also on the bottom of the, of the tank of the wheels, those are already pre-done. And then you have uh, some pre uh, assembled tracks here that are going to go partially around the wheels. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is individually put these tracks together that are going to go around the wheels. This is partial. This is like going down from the wheel onto the bottom or, or on its way up to the top. But as they go around the wheel, we have to create and assemble these tracks individually. And when it gets to that point of the build, I'll show you how I'm going to do that. But right now, I'm just going to show you how to put these tracks together that are going to go on the back of the tank. So I'm going to zoom in, and hopefully we can see this. Okay, so we're going to take our tweezers, and this is the type of tweezers I'm using. So any type of angle tweezers like this, and I'll put a link in the description to where I got these tweezers from. This is, these are, this is a really terrific, great set of tweezers. One of the best I've ever actually had, and I'll put a link in the descriptions on where I got them. All right, so you'll notice that on the tracks, there are three indents, here, here, and here. Just more in the center here for you. And then you have these other indents, or not indents, but protrusions, here, here, and here. And that's how the tracks are going to be formed. They're going to marry up just like that. So the only place that you're going to need to put glue is here, here, and here. And having tweezers like this is really going to help you out. So I'm going to put just a little bit of glue here and here. And then we're going to take our tweezers. We're going to then guide our piece right there, just like that. And then maybe push it down a little bit and make a solid connection. And that's all you have to do. So I'm going to try to do this again. Get another track here. Put just a little bit of glue here, here, and here. Take our angled tweezer. Guide it on where it needs to go, just like that. Push it down a little bit. 
push it in like so, and you're done. And I plan on when I'm all done with this, and I have to do this 15 times, I'm going to run a line of glue down here just as an extra measure of securing those tracks into place. But that's all you have to do. That's a very, very easy to do and very simple. You should be able to do these in no time. So I just wanted to show you that. Hope that helps you out. And I'm going to continue on with the build. Okay, I came up with a problem here on step four where we have to put this bar that's going to go across the tracks and attach it to the side of the tank. And on the tank itself, on the hull, where this is supposed to go, I'm making a best guess because there isn't really any indication on where this bar is supposed to attach. However, I did see a real tiny indentation or a, a raised section here, right about there. I don't know if the camera can pick that up or not, but there's a little tiny line right there. So I'm making a best guess that that's where this is supposed to go. And I'm going to then glue it down. You see where there's a kind of a, a lip right here? Right about there. And that's going to go over the lip of this edge right here. So I'm going to push this down. I'm going to glue it down. I'm going to push it down to where it looks something like that. Now you'll notice that the bar bends down toward the tank. But I don't think that's going to be a problem of uh, slipping in the tracks underneath that. But that's the best guess that I can come up with. There's really no other indication. I've already glued it on this side over here. And that's how it looks right there on the edge. I couldn't get it all the way down to make it that flush because you can still see that there is a gap right there. And I could not get that to go flush. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue here, not a lot, just a, just a tab, put it right there. And then I'm going to hold this down and make that as flush as I can get it. And that's where I'm going to put the bar. And hopefully that's correct. So I'm going to let that dry. I should be able to safely insert the tracks right underneath that bar because that should be able to raise up just a little bit in order to get the tracks in. Let's wait for that to dry. I'll put the tracks in, come back, and hopefully show you what that all looks like. Okay, I got the uh, tracks on. I did not glue them in as I indicated before because I'm going to paint these things uh, separately. But that's the tracks on the hull of the tank and they come flush right here at the very top. So hopefully I've got this positioned correctly, and uh, but we'll find out as we go on. If you look at the instructions though, again, it's really difficult to tell exactly where that's supposed to go, that bar is supposed to go. I think I've got mine still assembled or positioned correctly right about here, which is the third one from the top. So I counted third from the top here and that's where mine kind of like lies right about in this area right here we'll find out as the build goes on but that's my tracks on the tank on how i got mine on and hopefully i got that right okay on with the build okay i'm going to pause on the build on step number six which is where we uh, assemble the muffler onto the back of the tank as I've done here. And that's the muffler on the back of the tank. And it's a very tricky assembly. And I think if I can give you the following suggestion, it will make your life easier in putting all this together. So looking at the instructions, the first thing I want you to do is assemble the uh, muffler, then put the muffler on top of this uh, piece right here, this little plate. Then they want you to assemble this plate here, and you have the option of whether the doors are open or closed. I chose mine as being closed. And we'll get to these pieces right here a little bit later. And then they want you to then assemble uh, these uh, braces onto this plate here, put the, this plate on top of the braces, and then put this whole entire assembly onto the back of the tank, which is very, very tricky to do. 
So my recommendation to you is, make your life a lot easier, is to take this plate and then go ahead and assemble this. Don't assemble these. I'll tell you why later. And then put the braces onto this back plate right here. And this back plate is this plate right here. So put the braces on. Then put this piece on top. Then assemble the, the, this, these two pieces onto the back of the tank. It's going to make your life easier because if you don't do it, if you do it the way they want you to do it, you're going to have a chance of breaking the muffler off of this as you're trying to get that on. And then the, the pipes down here, which then wrap around and are assembled here, could also break off. They're going to get in your way. So just focus on this plate here. Assemble this. Decide whether you want your doors open and closed. If you want your doors open, I probably would recommend you putting the doors on after it's on the tank, after this plate's on the tank. Then put your braces on where they need to go, onto here. Put this plate on top of this plate here. Then put these two assemblies onto the back of the tank. It'll make your life a lot, a lot easier. Then you go ahead and, and uh, assemble your, your muffler, put the muffler on the tank or on the plate, and then that will allow you to put this at the right angle onto this plate so that these pipes move around and wrap up into here. So this is the angle of the, of the, of the muffler as it is. And then if you do it the, uh, the last step, then you put your, your pipes on here. Then you continue with these two pieces here and you'll be able to get them into the right angle and position those correctly centered onto these two round pieces right here. So that's my recommendation to you. Um, hope that the build tip will help you out. Now the reason why I said to skip these two pieces right here is it's not very clear exactly how they're supposed to go on. I mean, where are they supposed to, how are they supposed to be attached here or in here? How are they supposed to really be assembled? And I went through the entire instruction book trying to find close-ups of this section. And you'll see that they, those two pieces are not there. And then I went further into the instruction book to see if I couldn't find another example of that back area. And I couldn't find one. I went all through the entire section here and I couldn't find one. The thing is, is that when you put the top of the of the tank onto the the hull, that area is going to be totally 100% covered. So then the question is, why are you doing it in the, in the first place? Why install those pieces in the first place? I'm not going to install mine. I have this entire area is going to be completely covered once the top of the tank is on. I'm not going to put my, my piece on just to let you know what it looks like. That's it. And I have no idea how that is to go onto the uh, onto this assembly here. I just I just don't know where it really it's supposed to go. Is it supposed to be glued onto that little lug that you have right down there? Is it supposed to be on the side? I, I have no idea. So I've decided not to put it on, and um, knowing that this whole entire area is going to com be completely covered up, and you'll never ever see it again. Now there's a chance that you could see it. If you're going to have those doors open, like I showed you before, right back here, you have the option of these doors being open and closed. And those are right here, but that's on the bottom of the tank. That's these two pieces right here. You can have these open or you can have these closed. You could possibly see those pieces underneath here if you turn your tank upside down. Well, I'm not going to turn my tank upside down, so that's one reason why I decided to have those uh, closed and also to. It makes no sense to put in those little tiny details in here since you're never going to see it in the first place. But uh, that's my decision. That's what I'm going to do. And I uh, hope that the tip that I gave you on how to assemble all these parts onto the back of the, the tank will help you out. Okay, on with the build. Okay, it now comes to the point where we put the tracks on the tank. And you'll notice that the preform piece that they give you is a little wavy. 
and that indicates where this piece is going to sit on top of those wheels. And you'll notice that when they're set properly, the first tooth here sets into the first hole of that track right there. And you'll notice how the tracks are laid. This is the direction in which this track should be. So these little wave um, parts here should face this wheel. And that will put the track in the right direction of how it should go on the tank. Now the instructions show that we need to assemble individual sections of track. So here we have to assemble one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 and 11 individual pieces, then attach it to a preformed piece here, one more individual piece, then attach it to a preformed piece here, and then repeat the process on the other side. Now you can do this individually, you can glue each track individually if you want to, or you can follow an example that Andy's Hobby Headquarters has, a video on this almost exact same tank, and he shows how he makes one large piece. What he does is he takes the tracks and he pre-glues all the tracks on this side that's going to go here and he pre-glues all the tracks that are going on this side. So he has one large piece of track. He lets the glue dry for about a couple of minutes, long enough for the pieces to stick together but not long enough for the glue to completely set. And that will allow for the tracks to be somewhat flexible so that he can then wrap the tracks around the wheels all the way around and wrap it back up here and then glue it together up here. I'm going to try to do that. I'm also going to try to film that for you. If uh, the camera is in my way and I can't do it very well, I'll put a clip of his video uh, showing how he did it as well as a link to that video so you can see it in its entirety. So let me go ahead and get those tracks on, let them dry a little bit, and see if I can videotape that for you. Okay, the uh, glue has now set on the tracks for about four minutes. And let's see if I can't show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to hold this here like this, lift the tra tank up, and then guide this around like that making sure that the tracks are set in the grooves of the wheels like that and then wrap the other end up like this and it looks like I'm going to be successful. Up and around, put it around there and I'll go ahead and glue that in. So let me go ahead and glue that in and show you what the end result looks like. Okay, the tracks are on and everything is all nice and tight. So everything just went on just fine without any issues. If you want to know how I actually glued the tracks together, uh, just go back into this video at the timestamp indicated below. And that's where I show how I actually glued the individual tracks. But other than that, everything went on just fine without any issues. And uh, we'll go on with the rest of the build. Okay, I want to give a builder's tip on steps 9 and 10. And it has to do with this part right here, which is A29. Now you see how that lug has kind of an interesting configuration. It's got an upper part and a lower part. Be very careful when you're cutting off the sprue because it's going to be very easy for you to cut off this upper part here. You want to keep that intact because this piece is eventually going to go into this piece. And I'm not sure if the camera is picking this up or not, but right about here, you'll see that there's two configurations. There's a deep setting in there, and then there's like a ledge that goes right across. And that's how this part is going to fit in. That ledge is going to fit into the deeper part of the, of the recess of this piece. And it's going to help you put this light, which this is a searchlight that you're going to be building. It's going to help you put the searchlight into this uh, part right here correctly. And you're going to end up making this. Okay? So it's going to help you put that in right, nice and straight. So be very careful on how you cut this off the sprue. 
Uh, the next thing I want to bring out to your attention, I'm going to zoom out, is that it's going to ask you to drill some holes in a couple of parts. This part here, which is this one here, and I've already drilled the holes out, and that is right here and here. And it's going to ask you to use a 0 0.8 millimeter drill bit. And then on the top part of the hull, it's going to ask you to drill some holes as well. But these are going to be one millimeter. And they're right here. You're going to drill uh, four holes here, this one here, and then these three right down here in, in the bottom area. Don't know if the camera is picking this up or not. And then it's going to ask you to drill two more holes over here on the side. Uh, I'll put a link in the description on the drill bits that I use, but I use this right here. I got it off of Amazon. You get a whole set of different size drill bits, and they're all different color coded. And um, I'll put a link in the descriptions below on where I got that, but that's what I use to drill those holes out. So I wanted to give your uh, attention to, to that as well as to this piece right here that you got to be very careful, very careful on how you cut that off the sprue. Okay. All right. On with the build. Okay. So I've been working on the top of the hull and I've got uh, quite a lot of uh, work done on it, as you can see. And I'm also at the point where I'm putting photo etch. And this uh, starts around uh, step number 12 and 13. And the photo etch goes right in here. On this particular piece, this is TP3 or is it T uh, TP3. And that's how that photo etch goes in, just like that. A little bit more. You can see that. And here is kind of a back end view of it. The photo etch looks like this right here. And you'll see that there is a lip on both sides. And that lip goes over the edge on this side here and on the other side right there. And then it kind of just sits up against this edge right here. So you want to put super glue on the edge and then slip your photo edge part right into place. And that's how it should look. Then once that photo edge part is in place, you can put this piece in right here. And I think this is some sort of an air vent. But that goes in just like that. And then it is secured onto the top just like that. So I just wanted to uh, show you the photo etch part on how that goes in. Now I'm not going to put the tools on right away. That's why I've got these highlighted on the tools and the accessories that I've got uh, that I've decided I'm going to paint later. I've got them highlighted. So I think this is an antenna and then you have some cable here and then you have a couple of other parts and there's, a, there's some sort of a, a box, a storage box. And then you have your shovels and your axes and other tools over here. So I've highlighted them so I can go back and find them quickly and make sure that I get them all. I'm going to paint and weather those separately and then put them on the tank after the tank has been painted and weathered. And this is how the piece looks once it's installed up against that photo edge. And I wanted to show you that so you can see how that's done and what it looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and now continue on with the build. Okay, I'm going to pause at this stage of the build. Uh, I've already got the top attached to the hull with a lot of these detailed parts on here. And as I was attaching the top to the hull, I discovered that it was probably best not to install a couple of parts until after the top has been applied. So as you're going through the instructions, uh, I would not install the lights and I would not install these side supports until after the top has been applied because as you're trying to align the top it is possible that you can break these side supports off and also the lights can also break off particularly when you're trying to install the front armor and the gun. Now speaking of the gun first of all the instructions are very vague on how these parts really go onto the gun. I couldn't figure it out at all. And then as I got into the build, I noticed that the gun goes completely into this part here, into this uh, front section. 
and then it goes completely into the inside of the tank. So as you've completed the install of that and you put the front armor on, you're not going to see anything about the gun. All the details that you're going to do on that gun are completely hidden. So once that is installed and then you have your turret on, you're never going to see the details of the gun. So for me, it was a waste of time, I thought, to complete the assembly of that gun and all the details on it and trying to figure out exactly how this is assembled because you're never going to see anything. From this point back, it's all hidden. So I didn't understand why we had to do all this detail work when you're never going to see it. And also, too, yeah, I'm going to zoom even more. I could not figure out how these parts are attached to the gun. It's just not very, very clear at all. After I discovered that it's going to be completely hidden, I'm going to zoom out, it, you'll never see it. So my advice is just put the gun in. Just put this part in. Don't mess around with anything else and you'll be just fine. So those are my building tips for uh, the top as it attaches to the, the hull. And you can see everything is all nice in place. Now, one thing that I did have a problem with is a tight fit here at the back. I had to put some putty on both sides of the tank to hide uh, a gap right here that I could not close down naturally. So I just took some gray putty on a toothpick, placed it inside the, that opening, and then uh, brushed on just a little bit of thinner to smooth it out and clean it all up. And it came out pretty well. So that's all uh, closed up. But that was the only problem that I had. Uh, the other tip that I can give you in terms of putting on the side supports, move this so you can see a little bit better, is I would first glue these supports in where they're supposed to go and let them dry, uh, let the glue dry for about maybe five or six uh, minutes. Just long enough for the glue to hold the part in place, but not firm enough so that you can't adjust them when you put the bar in place. Now the bar has some indications on where they're supposed to go. I don't know if the camera can see that or not, but they're just two little uh, protrusions and the support goes between those protrusions. So it's not a, a push to fit and there is no actual lug that goes into a hole onto the bar. The bar is just set in place right here. So my recommendation is that when you're putting the bar on, glue it, glue it on whatever end you want to work on. I worked over here first, got that in, let the glue set for about oh, 30 seconds uh, or so. And then once that was kind of sort of firm in place, I then glued in the far end. That then aligned this bar up so that it would then fit perfectly for this support to go into place. And you have to adjust, or at least I did, I had to adjust the support arms just barely so that this um, bar would then fit into place properly. So those are my build tips. Hope that will help you out. And uh, after that, you can then start working on the turret. And that's where I'm at right now is on step number 18, uh, where we start to put the details of the turret in place. Okay, so I'm going to go on with the build. Hope that helps you out. And uh, if there's anything else, I'll let you know. Okay, I'm going to pause on the build here at step 20, because I want to point out a couple of uh, parts that I think needs uh, some special attention. Start with uh, step number 20, which is right here where we attach this part to the top of the hull or, or the turret or whatever this is. And that's this right here. It's all it's attached. And you'll notice that it does not have a firm and tight seal. And that's by design. So don't worry too much about that. What I want to point out is, is that back here on step number 19, we attach a couple of uh, detail parts. It looks like it's a hatch with a hinge that goes here and here. Well, once you attach this part here number, on number 20 onto the hull, you're going to cover up those two parts permanently because this is really going to glue onto that. And that's where this is. So the question is, why are we putting those parts on there? And it does attach 
down here, there's a, a lug down here, or a, a slot, rather. There's a lug on this piece here that goes into the slot on, on this piece here, and it goes right there, which is indicated right here on the, on the instructions. So this is lined up correctly. And you'll notice that right down in here, you can see those uh, detail parts right there. I don't know if the camera can pick that up or not, but right there, you can see one of them right there, and you can see the other right there. So the question is, why are we putting those parts in? Uh, it does not indicate in the instructions that this is an either or. You can either put it on or you don't have to put it on. That's not indicated. So I don't understand why that is there. So, I mean, if you wanted to, I mean, I installed them not realizing that these are going to be covered up. I did install it, as you can see. If I knew that they were going to be covered up, I probably wouldn't have installed them. And uh, getting this little tiny hinge that you see here, I don't know if the camera can see that or not. Let me zoom in real, real tight. There we go. Maybe see if we can't zoom maybe even further. There we go. That little tiny hinge that you see right there, that's extremely difficult to put in. And it took quite a while to get that little fiddly piece in there. And it's very, very tiny. So why spend all that time getting that piece in when once you attach this piece, you're never going to see it again. Now, speaking of never seeing a, a part again, let's look at step number 21 right here. Now, on step on the first step, they want you to put in. Now, this part here is very, very tiny. It's an extremely tiny part and it looks like some sort of a, I don't know, a latch or something to secure the hatch into place. But you put three of them onto little lugs that are around the perimeter of this piece. Then you immediately flip the piece over and glue it shut onto this piece here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more here. So you glue this piece face down onto here permanently shut here and then once that's in place you're never going to see it. And this is the, the piece that I'm, I'm, I'm installing right now. I'm constructing it and this hatch is permanently closed. The only way to see it is if you turn it around, whoops, kind of fell off, and you see those little tiny details that are in there. So the question is, why are you putting those little tiny details in there? Why are you putting this little tiny latch or whatever this is onto the back of this piece when you're never going to see it? Now you could, if you wanted to, glue this in and then find a 1 35th scale figure to put into the hatch or through the hatch cover. But if you're not going to put any figures on your tank, then it makes no sense to glue this in an open position because there's nothing to see when, when it's open. So it didn't really make any sense. I just thought I would uh, point that out to you. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out too is uh, during the construction of the doors right here in step 20 that they want you to attach here. I've already done that here, as you can see, but I had to put some putty underneath in order to cover up a gap. And I think what happened was is that when you put all when you put the doors when you put the doors onto this part here, uh, it kind of makes it difficult to determine the orientation of this frame that needs to go fit correctly onto this uh, top of the turret here. And I think that's probably why I had a gap underneath there. I probably put this upside down. So what I'm going to do is on the, on the other side, I've already predetermined the correct orientation of this piece by putting a little black mark right here to tell me that the correct orientation is that right there. Flip this over, you'll see that it's nice and tight on the other side. So I'm going to glue this in on the back and then I'm going to attach the doors correctly into there finishing the assembly. Now again, they're telling you to put an additional piece on the back of the door. So unless you're going to glue this door open, there's no need to put this piece in. So if your door is going to look like, or your assembly is going to look like this with the doors shut, 
you're never going to see the details on the back of the doors because there's details in the back here and there's that piece right there uh, glued in. On the other door that uh, over here that I'm going to be doing, this one right here, I am not going to put that detail piece in because my doors are going to be completely closed. And again, there is no either or instructions on here. The only either or instruction that you have in, on this page, page 10, is this right here. You can either use this piece or you can use this piece. But uh, I just thought I would uh, point that out. Also, I would recommend, unless somebody in, in the comment section below can uh, say why we need to put these uh, little uh, hinges up here, or these uh, hatches or whatever these uh, enclosures are, my recommendation is don't bother with these. Just glue this in without them. Because once this is on again, you're never going to see it. Okay, so that's my comments on uh, steps 20 through 21. Hope that uh, helps you out when you get to this part of the build. And if there's anything else that needs to be uh, brought out, I'll let you know. Okay, I want to pause on the build uh, between steps uh, 22 and 23. Uh, this right here is not any, any, anything to really, really talk about. Uh, the only thing I did was I chose this part over this part because this has a little bit more additional detail. When you start assembling the gun, I did not uh, glue these together. Uh, it was a, such a, a tight fit that it went on without any problems at all. This assembly right here, uh, you can actually skip. it. Uh, I went ahead and assembled it and I put it in, attached it, but it really serves no purpose. It's just a little added detail that you're never going to see once it is inside. The turret. Okay, now this part right here I think is needed. Uh, go ahead and assemble it as you see here in the diagram. That part is this part right here and it attaches to the gun on the inside. So I believe it actually secures the gun in place. So you may want to go ahead and uh, install that. I did not glue the gun into here. I just, it was more like a push fit. But uh, this piece is not glued in at all. It's just uh, attached to the to the gun, the end of the barrel. This is where we get into a little bit of tricky assembly here. Pay very, very close attention to the orientation of this part. Make sure that when you're putting the gun in, that this square part here is to your right as you're putting it in. So that square part is this area right in through here. Also pay very close attention to how you put the gun assembly in. I'm going to zoom in. You'll notice that one of the barrels, one of the sides right here, has a lug, which is different than the lug that's over here. This is a this lug right here is a half moon shape. This lug right here is just a complete circle. So you want to make sure that this large lug right here is toward this large square. If this assembly is uh, turned around where this square is, ends up over here, you're not going to be able to complete the assembly properly at, when it gets onto the tank. So it's very important that the gun, this large post, this large lug here, is on the side of the large square. The second thing that uh, I would recommend is, is that when you're putting this part in and you're putting this part in right here, only glue one in on this, uh, th this part right here. So what I did was I glued this onto here, then I attached this part. There's a lug right here that goes into the hole right in here. This is a hole right here. Because this is supposed to move. When it's all done, you should be able to move your part up and, and back like that. So it's a movable part so you can raise and lower your gun. That's what that actually does. So you, what I did was, again, is I, I glued this on, then I attached the, the lug of this part into the hole here, and then I pushed this whole entire assembly into this part here. Once this was flush with this part, I then slipped this part into the hole here, into this little slot right here, and then just glued in the edges of this part right here. So I just put glue in right here at the edge, right along through here, being very, very careful not to put any glue in the hole. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get your gun to move like this. All right, now, then once this assembly is in, go ahead and insert your gun and then insert this part on top of the gun. Now, I did not glue the gun in. 
this was a very, very tight fit going through the holes that are in the back of this part here. So it's very, very tight fit. Did not glue this in at all. And I did not glue this part onto here. It was also a very, very tight fit getting it over the barrel of the gun. Once you got all that uh, assembled, now it's time to put the whole entire assembly onto the turret. And you know you've done it right. So when you have this, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more. And this is going to then fit on just like that. Okay, so it matches the, the curvature. So this is a directional part. So this angle right here matches the angle on the sides right here. Goes on just like that. So then when you get this part on, which is this part here, it's going to complete the assembly just like that. And if you got that, then you got everything in right. Okay, I hope that helps you out when you get to that part of your build, and that will make your assembly a lot easier. And I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the assembly of the tank. Okay, the model is done. The tank is complete, and all the parts that should be on the tank are on the tank. Uh, there are some parts I haven't put on. I haven't uh, attached the, the side armors here. I'm going to remove these so that I can do the detailed work on the wheels, the tracks, and the side of the tank. There's also some camouflage work. And uh, the, the tools and the antenna, they're also not on the tank. That's going to be done separately. Tracks here, they're also not permanently attached. I'm going to do those separately as well. But everything else is on the, uh, on the tank. So let me go ahead and give you... A 360 view of how the tank looks. Also that's not permanently attached are the wheels. This wheel here and the wheel here in the back, they're not permanently attached. I'm also going to do those separately. Okay, I hope that the uh, build tips and the other information that I've uh, given in this video series uh, was helpful. Uh, if it did, please give me a thumbs up. It really does help the channel quite a bit. And if you haven't already subscribed, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, always have fun in your garage, your workshop, or wherever it is that you build your, your models. And until next time, we'll see you later. Take care.